Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a video of my top 10 favourite me made items of 2020. I thought I would show you guys my favourite makes of the year and yeah just do like a kind of chatty sit down video and show you my favourite patterns and the me maids that really kind of made an impact in my life this year. So. Yes, before we get started in that, if you're new to my channel, make sure to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, and we're going to get straight on into it. Little disclaimer, I have a cold, so if I'm a little bit sniffly or nasally in this video, I am so sorry. <laughs> um, it literally has taken me three attempts to film this intro because I was like, you know when you feel a sneeze coming on? Yeah, so I was like that. Um, but we're here, we're going to do the video, and I'm excited about it. It sort of just came to me um, this morning. Coming to the end of the year, how crazy is that? It's December, we're nearing the end of 2020, and for a lot of us this year has just been a bit of a whirlwind um, for so many reasons, and here we are. So I thought I would round up my makes, and firstly, before I show you my favorites, I just wanna say a big thank you to any of you guys that have sort of tuned into my videos every week on a Sunday. At the start of March, um, going into lockdown, I really channeled my sort of creative energy into refining my YouTube channel and my niche and um, sewing has sort of come with that and um, I've been sewing for a long time but it's only been really the past year and a half that I've I felt confident enough to share it with you guys so um, yeah it's it's been a journey like doing weekly videos every Sunday since March I feel really proud of that and I just want to thank you guys as well for actually tuning into my content it means a lot to me so here we are and we're gonna round up the the year with all of my me maids and hopefully they inspire you to go and do some sewing or um, go and make some for yourself similar um, so let's get started also that urge to sneeze is still there so uh, <laughs> I'm really struggling <laughs> anywho number one this is not in order of preference by the way, it's just, I'm just going to show you um, and talk about them. So this is the Bobby Skirt Pinafore Dress and it's from Tilly and the Buttons, it's their pattern, the Bobby pattern, which you can either make this pinafore or you can make a skirt. And I made this back in January, February time, so right at the start of the year. And it was the first make I, I I made with my new sewing machine, I say new, it's not really new anymore, but my sewing machine that I got this year, um, which was the Janome DKS 100, and this was the first thing that I made on a kind of like bougie electronic machine, and it was so exciting because, you know, it's quite an extensive make really, um, even though it's for like confident beginners, for me at the time, I just remember thinking, wow, it's got pockets, it's got all of the buttonholes, it's got a waistband, you know, it's got buckles. I, I was just so kind of overwhelmed at that point when I was making it. So I'm really proud of this make because it's kind of like to see that what I did back at the start of the year and to what I feel confident sewing now, it's just honestly it's a bit mind-blowing so yeah I'm super proud of it I also lined it in this really gorgeous Ruby Star Society uh, rayon fabric which is from Sew Me Sunshine and then the corduroy I think was either from Pound Fabrics or Rainbow Fabrics and I, I honestly can't remember but it's just such a beautiful green shade and yeah I've worn it so much because you can obviously layer it over so many things I was just really really pleased with this uh, Bobby Bobby pinafore dress and I just think it looks really cute, especially as like autumn, winter, um, over little jumpers, stuff like that. I just love it and I've worn it quite a few times um, this year and I, yeah, it's one of my favourites. Second one is another Bobby. Um, I thought I'd show them both together, but this is the skirt variation. And I made this again, sort of towards the start of the year, um, in around March time. And I decided to line it because the fabric was is like a, a fine needle cord, um, like stretchy fabric, which is probably a little bit weird for a bobby skirt. It's kind of they need to be quite structured, and and this had a bit of stretch to it. So I thought I would line it, and it turned out so well. I was so so happy with it. I even I ran out of fabric, so I even did like the inside of my waistband with this really cute like floral fabric as well. So it's a complete accident, but. You know, no one sees it, but it just makes me happy when I open it up and see it. That was one of my labels. This is the first make that I included one of my labels in. 
So that was, yeah, really nice to see that all come together. And again, because I made it in a mint green, it's so me, like my personal style is all pastels and it's rare that you see a little skirt like this um, in a kind of pastel shade. So I was really, really pleased with it. Worn it quite a lot. You can see it's quite creased where it's just been in my drawer, but um, I included like a little back pocket. I, I did all the pockets, all the extras on this one. I just went for it. Next item is actually, I'm wearing this top variation here and I just love this one as well. Um, this is the Friday Pattern Company Sage Brush. I made this and do you know what, I don't have a lot of like classic things in my wardrobe. I'm so drawn to prints, I'm like a prince magpie. Um, so whenever it comes to buying fabrics, I'm always drawn to um, like prints when they, you know, some of my favourite brands post a print and I'm like, oh I need that. So I don't have a lot of like basics, like plain colours or you know, just things that you can like mix and match. So when I made this, I was just so proud of myself because I actually found this beautiful fabric on New Craft House. And although it's got a kind of like a uh, daisy sort of flower to it, it's also very sort of clean and stylish, which for me is a bit of a, um, a rarity. So yeah, I, I've worn this to absolute death. I had just enough fabric as well. So I had to actually make the sleeves a lot shorter, but I, I quite like the fact they're not further down and too puffy because it means it's a bit more wearable every day. These are like mega, mega. So it makes it a little bit more of a statement. Um, whereas this one's just so clean and lovely. I can wear it under pinafore dresses or I could just, you know, wear it on its own. Um, and I love it. Yeah, I've just worn it to death. It's such a, a dream to sew, the sagebrush pattern, if you've not sewn it already. Um, it's such a lovely top pattern. And sticking with the Friday Pattern Company patterns, some of you might know if you've watched my last video that I actually am freelancing for the social media channels for Friday now. Um, I'm just so blessed that I've managed to find a job as well within the community. It's really, really cool. Um, but that's another topic anyway. Um, this dress is the Wilder. Uh, the Wilder gown and I just love it so much. I picked up this print, uh, this pastel block. A lot of people think it's different fabrics, but it's not, it's literally one fabric and it had like a rainbow stripe kind of chunks within it. And it was from Sew Me Sunshine and I picked it up from the textile uh, festival, uh, the festival, the sewing festival. I can't remember the name of it, but the textile festival, whatever that is. Um, yeah, <laughs> my brain isn't working. And she only had a little bit of this fabric and I'm so glad I brought it. I've worn this dress so much. I've even styled it under, like over the top of a jumper with tights in the winter with a cardigan because I just love it so much. Um, it's really flowy. It's a really pu beautiful light print. All of my favorite colors as well. So yeah, really love this. And I, I think this is gonna be in my wardrobe for many years to come and it's just a it's just a treat to wear really next item is this gorgeous daisy dress that i made you might have seen my vlog on this one i did a hack to the neckline so this is actually a tilly in the buttons indigo dress i kind of hacked and made like a mashup of things so i used a puff sleeve pattern from a vintage pattern that my nan gave me um which worked so well i was so happy at how it fit um, in terms of it fit just into the indigo without much stress really um, and so it's created this really cool like little sort of modest puff sleeve I wouldn't say it's like as, as crazy as some of the ones that I've seen on the you know on the market but um, so I've got this lovely little puff sleeve and a, a square neckline which kind of gives it that like 90s vibe um, and then I made a little belt with this vintage belt buckle from uh, da, 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 the textile fair um, that I, I went to as well. They had like a vintage little like stand there. So yeah, it's just a dream again. It's like one of my favorite dresses of the year. And then I've got my little daisy label in the top of that one as well. Sorry, I just had a bit of a coughing fit. So, oh gosh, moving on. Next one is this. <laughs> this is the Alexa romper jumpsuit from Tilly and the Buttons yet again. You'll notice a pattern here. I use a lot of Tilly and the Buttons patterns. Um, and I made it in this really cool, like coral, dark red uh, linen, which it just, I was so happy with this, you guys. Like the, I redid the fit, so I shortened the body on it. Um, I'd already made a previous Alexa, which sadly is probably kind of being relegated to the back of my wardrobe because the body was just so long on me. But this one just came together like such a dream. 
and I love it. The colour is a little bit different for me. I went for like this bright, which I really love. Um, I am actually considering in the summer or spring, summer next year, making it more into shorts because as much as I love the longer length, um, I probably won't wear it that much if I'm being honest, but I think next year I'm going to do a little bit of a, a kind of a renew of this and just make it into the short version. But yeah, absolutely love it. Um, I've got an, a vlog on this one, so you can go and watch it if you like. Um, it just came together so well, I was really pleased. Next up is another one of my dreamy little dresses. And again, I just need some occasions to wear them because wearing them around the house just doesn't have quite the same like feel to it. Um, but I made this really lovely Myosotis dress. I And I think the pattern is from Deer and Doe. I will leave it in the, descri the description box below. I always get them mixed up, but this is the Myosotis. And I made this version, I was so pleased with it. It was at the very start of like lockdown number one in March and I wanted to make it with this broidery on glaze that I picked up in lilac from uh, Lamazi I think it is and I, I knew it would obviously be see-through so I had to line it so I managed to not only make this pattern for the first time but also line it so I was really really proud of myself for that. Um, I do a little like close-up as well And then also it's got like the tie up at the back. So I added these like belt ties. This pattern isn't meant to have it, but what happened is when I lined it, it made it quite like bulky as a fit. So when you just wore it as a smock dress, um, it kind of stood out quite a lot. So I, I added that little belt tie just to kind of pull it in. Um, but this would be so cute for like, you know, a special occasion, even a wedding or something. I thought it was lovely. And then obviously the little flower buttons I got from eBay. So, um, yeah, really, really pleased with this make. Again, I just need somewhere to wear it now, but it's fully lined. Really, really pre pleased with it. Um, it's got another one of my labels in there as well, which just brings me lots and lots of joy. So I have two more things to show you guys. And the next one is something that literally, I think I put my <laughs> my like tears and everything into this make. Um, and it is this really cute sheared top. I just had to include it because if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen back in the summer, I had an absolute nightmare trying to find out, trying to basically work my machine um, on how to shear. And I watched every tutorial you can imagine on YouTube. And I was just so confused as to why I just couldn't get it to work. Um, and I was at a loss of it. I'd spent all this money on the uh, shearing elastic. And this was a tester, basically. This was like a test run. Um, I had this uh, gingham fabric, it's a gingham viscose. And I think I got it from Pound Fabrics. And I honestly was just at a loss. I was like, don't know why it's not working. Anyway, I have a vlog on this video for this because I finally got it to work. And it was a simple matter of, instead of putting uh, your metal like bobbin through like the cutting bit, you have to like manually pop it through this, anyway. Long story short, I made it and it took me weeks of trial and error and I was just so proud of myself that I stuck to it. I managed to make it and this is the outcome and I haven't sheared since and I don't think it's something that I will go back to in a hurry if I'm being honest because it was just such a difficulty. I just love it. I think it turned out really well. It was a mashup of um, the vintage sleeve that I used in that daisy dress and just a rectangle for the bodice. I just realised I've got two more left now because one of them is downstairs and I need to run and go get it. <laughs> okay, number nine. So I've got one left after this one. Um, this is the Lotta dress. This is one of my sort of like recent makes, a couple of months ago I made this one. And it's one of the brand new Tilly Buttons patterns. And I just fell in love with the ease of it. Um, it's, you know, it's a, another dreamy sew. There's no fastenings, there's no buttonholes, there's no zips. Um, there's no like fussy necklines, like literally it's just like the dreamiest pattern, but also it has a really gorgeous skirt. So if you're like me and you're a little bit bigger on the bottom, um, bottom half of your body, then this is such a lovely pattern because it's got that kind of skater style, tee style, just outy skirt to it. Um, I just loved it so much. It was such a, a lovely thing to come together. And even though it was like a beginner's kind of pattern, making it in this fabric, this is the Ruby Star Society 
I, I want to say it's a rayon, but I, I think I could be wrong. Um, I will leave it in the, the description box. Um, but this is the Melody Miller fabrics. But this this dress is such a, a wow factor dress, isn't it? It's, it's very bold, and I'm very aware that this is one of those, like, statement dresses. But in this sort of, like, slouchy style skater dress, I just feel like it's just, it's kind of, like, really cool. You could literally just pop this on, really effortless, um, turn up to a party or friend's house and, you know, you've got an outfit. Um, I probably am going to save this for Christmas Day or Boxing Day and I just love it so much. I think it's um, a wonderful dress that I will, you know, sort of cherish in my wardrobe for a long time. One more make, the make of all makes this year and I'm going to run down and go get it. It had to be the one and only, the Eden raincoat. Take that off. And breathe, just come up the stairs. So, the Eden raincoat has to be my make of all the makes for 2020. This was my blood, sweat and tears that went into this make. Literally, okay, maybe not sweat, but you know. 2020 was the weirdest year, but I managed to make myself a coat. That to me, I'm just so proud of this. Honestly, guys, yeah. I, I mean, it speaks for itself. I've got a whole vlog on this coat, if you wanna go watch it. Um, it was an, a huge effort, but I got there and I'm just so glad I did it. Um, I don't think I will be making a coat again in a hurry. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm just really proud of this, this coat. So I just wanted to say, like, without you guys, without my sewing, I think this year probably would have been a lot different for me. Um, and I just thank you so much for tuning in each week. Give me, you know, such amazing feedback all of your positive energy really. Sewing has been such a, an outlet for my mental health and I've almost like not realised how much I needed it. Um, I'm just so, I'm so glad, I'm so happy and I'm also so glad that I get to share it with you guys in my weekly videos and my vlogs because you will see this year, if you've tuned in and you've watched, there's been some highs and lows and a lot of learning along the way and a lot of laughter as well, a lot of fun. And yeah, a lot of singing as well. <laughs> I haven't sung in this video, but um, yeah, a lot of singing and just, it's just really got me through 2020. And I just can't wait to see what 21, 2021 has to bring um, in terms of my me maids. I've definitely slowed down the making process because I just, that fire in my belly at the start of March, I was making something almost weekly. You know, I was like churning out the makes. Um, and now come to the end of the year, I I have I'm working two or three jobs at the moment, like my freelance work. Um, so sadly, my sewing isn't as regular. But just when I get that time to sit on my sewing machine and unwind and really just focus on a project, it's that m that mindfulness, that m sort of moment of concentration, awareness um, that I just really really needed. Um, so yeah, I just want to say another thank you for watching and tuning into my videos this year. Let me know in the comments what your favourite make was out of the ones that I've shown you. And thanks for tuning in. It was a long video. You know I like to chat. So <laughs> I know I like to ramble. Um, but yeah, there we are. Let me know what your favourite was. And thank you for tuning in, you guys. And I can't wait to share more makes of you, uh, you know, in the coming weeks and in the next year. So yeah, bye, take care.